Hi, my name is Rose, and today I'm going to be presenting some joint work done at MIT, Harvard, and UChicago. In the past few years, we've seen significant progress made in coordination algorithms for zero-sum games. A lot of this progress has been focused on self-playing algorithms, so where agents are learning about coordination by competing against themselves. But we really need to ask ourselves about whether these systems are really learning how to coordinate. There are generally three different types of failure modes that we see. One is that these agents fail to coordinate with other players other than themselves. Two is that these agents are specialists. They were trained to coordinate on specific environments and on specific tasks, but they can't scale to any of the new settings. And finally, these agents are sample inefficient. Take, for example, OpenAI5 networks that were trained by OpenAI. In order for them to coordinate that well, they needed about 180 years worth of game playing. By contrast, we find great coordinators in human babies. You can see in this video, in experiments conducted by Warnick and Tomasello, without any communication at all and without even planning ahead of time, the baby observes what this man is doing and understands what this man is trying to accomplish and tries to help him out. Isn't that amazing? This baby can quickly and flexibly infer the intentions of other people, otherwise known as theory of mind. And it's exactly these kinds of common sense abilities that we want our AI systems to have. So where are the coordination challenges that we're looking at? One is divide and conquer. So how exactly should we split up subtasks? Two is cooperation. If we're working on the same subtask, how should we work together on it? And finally, three, spatial temporal movement. How should we avoid in getting each other's way? This can be interpreted as collision avoidance. Our contributions are the following. One is we'll first introduce a multi-agent coordination test suite. Two is we'll introduce our main uh, mechanism, Bayesian delegation, which is uh, our learning mechanism for enabling agents to rapidly infer subtasks of other agents in a decentralized manner. And finally, three, we'll show some empirical simulations which demonstrate the importance of Bayesian delegation as well as some other methods that we introduce. So first, like many others, we're inspired by video games. Specifically here, we're inspired by cooperative games such as Overcooked. But we're not the only one who wanted to adopt uh, cooking tasks to evaluate multi-agent systems, just like at Song and Carol for also in Overcooked inspired like environments or shared plans from Barbara Groats. Our formalism starts off with a multi-agent Markov decision process and we add in subtasks. You can interpret these subtasks as these recipes here that you can see in the middle. Now note the compositionality in our recipes. You can see here our first recipe is a simple tomato recipe where you need to chop the tomato and plate the tomato then to deliver it. Our second recipe combines that recipe plan along with a similar recipe plan for the lettuce. And finally our last recipe is the salad one where instead of considering them as distinct recipe plans, as you can see here, the ingredients actually have to be combined together and then delivered. Similar to the game, uh, our agents uh, only share the screen and they don't know each other's intentions or policies. Our settings are similarly compositional in the sense that we simply add on counters in order to encourage, for instance, passing or completely cut off uh, the agents from accessing each other's areas. Here in this video, you can see an example of agents interacting with objects, as well as objects interacting with other objects, such as when the agent plates the lettuce onto a plate. Onto our methods. So our methods can be understood in two basic modules. One is a module that determines what a ta our task allocation should be. You can interpret this as what should I do and what should you do? The second module handles actions, so given our task allocations, what should our specific actions be? Now note that these methods are going to be described from the perspective of one agent, and they're executed in a completely decentralized way across all agents. So the first part is our high-level planner. The goal of the high-level planner is to determine the most likely task allocation. Let's take, for example, this recipe here in the middle and on this environment. The possible set of task allocations that would be available could be the following here. Now no, the first two where red and blue, where the red and blue agent chop the tomato or chop the lettuce together, this is an example of our cooperation challenge where agents are sharing subtasks. The last two where the red agent chops the tomato and the blue chops the lettuce or vice versa is an example of our divide and conquer challenge where we're doing different subtasks. 
So these agents are maintaining beliefs over these task allocations, and they do so by Bayesian theory of mind. In contrast to prior works, our subtasks require coordination. So now given this distribution over task allocations, we want to select now the most likely task allocation, by which you just take the max over this distribution. To ground this in our formalism that we introduced before, this is a one-to-one -one mapping of what you see intuitively described here on the left uh, to our formalism on the right in the middle. So the task you could imagine, for instance, to be uh, chopped tomato, where red and blue chopping the tomato together, this is what the task allocation would look like, and the similar pattern follows. Now onto our low-level planner. The question that the low-level planner is trying to answer is given TA, what action should I take? Now, there are two main types of coordination problems that the low-level planner is trying to solve. One is the divide and conquer challenge, where we want to avoid collisions given that uh, our subtasks are different from each other. In this case, agent I creates a model of the other agent and best responds to that. This is pretty similar to decentralized planning algorithms that also use best response, such as the works done by Daniel Clase et al. The main difference between our works is that we adopt a object-oriented representation, whereas that they focus on a spatial representation, so focusing on locations. The next coordination problem that our low-level planner is trying to solve is assuming that we are working on the same subtask, how exactly do we coordinate our movements? In this case, Agent I simulates a fictitious joint planner, so where the action space of this joint planner is the combination of both my action space and your action space. Given a joint plan, agent I then executes its part of that joint plan. Now, note that both agents are modeling each other. So in our method, we don't have a guarantee about whether all agent I and agent J are going to share the same types of beliefs, um, i.e. the task allocation distribution. And we also don't have a guarantee about whether or not the actions that they assume other agents will take will actually be, in fact, the real actions that they take. Moving on to our experiments, we simulate our experiments on two agents and on all the three and three recipes and the three kitchens that you saw before on 50 different seeds. We also evaluate our full model against lesions of itself. To take an example of understanding what our lesions are doing, we've uh, assuming that we have two tasks and two agents. This is the task allocations that our full model is considering. So where it considers all combinations of uh, tasks to agents. The next lesion that we consider is the no joint planning lesion, where we're only considering subtasks where we can't where we can't share those subtasks. So these assignments are completely unique across agents. And finally, the last lesion that we're considering is the no joint planning, no Bayesian delegation lesion, which is incentivize a completely greedy agent. So the agent only considers tasks allocated to itself. Now, here what you're going to see is an example uh, video of our full model on different recipes and environments. Here is the salad recipe demonstrated on the partial divider, where you can see that these agents in a completely decentralized manner are coordinating on how to pass objects uh, across the counter and then finally deliver to the goal. And the next two videos that you're going to see is the same exact recipe to the manual lettuce, a value on the same environment. But note here that there are different types of behaviors that emerge. In this first video here, you're going to see that the agents are splitting up the tomato and the lettuce track. So one agent handles just the lettuce stuff and the other agent handles just the tomato. By contrast, a value on a different seed, these agents here actually split up who does the chopping and who does the uh, plating. So here the red agent is the one that mainly does the cutting and the blue agent does the uh, plating and then the delivery. So here already you can see how our model enables agents to coordinate in many different ways and still converge on an efficient joint strategy. So here what you're going to see is now a, a grid of uh, performance results. So the number of time steps need to complete a given task uh, shown here by columns. And then by rows, it's going to be evaluating these recipes on these environments. So in our first model, this is the full model performance. Uh, and in orange, now you can see the no, no joint planning lesion. Notably, uh, the no joint planning lesion fails on completing the full divider because it's unable to coordinate actions between each of the agents. 
And the no joint planning and no Bayesian delegation also fails the no, uh, the a full model for similar reasons, but sometimes it is also more efficient than no joint planning. And we hypothesize this to be, the, be because of um, in uh, no joint planning, we're still making inferences about other agents. Hence, oftentimes there comes a problem of uh, yielding the subtask to the other agent, even though that might not actually be the case. Whereas the no joint planning, no Bayesian delegation acts in a completely greedy way. So that concludes our work and on to discussions now. So there are two main ne mechanisms that are necessary for coordination. One is theory of mind via inverse planning. So being able to rapidly infer high level subtasks of other agents. And the other part is joint planning. So being able to successfully coordinate on the uh, low level. As for future directions, we'd like to scale up to more agents and consider the computational trade-offs of making then more inferences. And the second part is representing distinct roles in subtasks in order to allow for concurrency. So that wraps up our work. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, and thank you for listening to our presentation.